In this video, we're going to discuss creating an answerable clinical question. This is a key skill to have as a practitioner of evidence-based practice as it will enable you to find answers more quickly and not feel as overwhelmed. In this discussion, we will also talk about the two types of clinical questions that are out there and their role as you're coming to finding a solution to whatever problem you're trying to address. There are many reasons you might be asking questions. As a practitioner, you may be doing this to update or support an existing hospital or unit policy. Or you may be asking questions in order to find ways to improve patient care. A last reason you might be asking questions as is because you are a lifelong learner. As a professional, you're always looking to improve your skills and find better ways to do things. Asking good questions will enable you to find answers to be able to do so. Regardless of the reason why you're asking the question, as a nurse, it's going to be important for you to be able to ask a clear, answerable question. Because as a nurse, you don't have the time to go through all the information that's out there. A clear question will allow you to focus your search and be more effective in finding the answers that you need. Also, because you're so busy, being able to get in the practice of knowing what is a clear answerable question will allow you to be more effective as a practitioner, not only because you'll spend less time looking for information, but also because it will allow you to communicate clearly with colleagues and get the answers you need to better care for your patients, which will in turn further clinical practice, not just for yourself, but also potentially for your colleagues. When it comes to evidence-based practice, there's two types of questions you tend to ask. The one that you tend to begin with is what is called a background question. A background question allows you to determine uh, what options you have out there. It tends to be more broad based, um, tends to start with something like who, what, when, uh, with some sort of verb, and then usually is in uh, reference to some sort of disorder, test, or treatment. Uh, you can think of this as an analogy of the forest. What you're doing in a background question is just seeing what is out there on your topic. An example of this would be a question such as, what are some techniques used to prevent pressure ulcers during hospitalization? You'll notice it's very broad and will allow you to do a search that will um, give you the different techniques that are out there without focusing on a particular one. Once you have an answer to your background question and understand the basic concepts about the condition or problem you're trying to address, as well as uh, understanding what your options are as far as interventions, it is then that you get to a foreground question, which is a second type of clinical question when it comes to evidence-based practice. Where this question differs from background questions is instead of being uh, relatively broad, it tends to be very focused and uh, focuses on a specific condition or type of patient and therefore is very easily able to be made a PICO question. If you go back to my analogy about the trees, remember I told you the background question is kind of like the forest. You're seeing all the trees that are available. When you get to a foreground question, what you're going to be doing is focusing on a specific tree or a specific type of intervention. And so therefore, your, your question will go from being very broad to being very focused. An example would be, how does continuous lateral rotation compare to mattress overlays in preventing the occurrence of pressure ulcers? You'll notice here, instead of it being like a background question where I asked about what the best interventions would be to prevent uh, pressure ulcers, here I'm being very specific and looking at or comparing two interventions that I want to understand which one will be more effective in trying to prevent a pressure ulcer in a patient. When it comes to your foreground question, that is where you're going to be able to come up with a question using the PICO format. It's very hard and if not impossible to use a PICO format when doing a background question, but when you're using a foreground question, that's where the PICO format comes into play. As you can see, the uh, various letters uh, stand for uh, various pieces of your question. Uh, 
Uh, the one thing I would like to point out here that people sometimes get confused by is the difference between what the intervention is and the comparison. Your intervention is what you're going to do. What's the new thing that you want to do? What's the new type of treatment you want to try? The C or the comparison is what you are doing now. Okay, so if you're doing something uh, in treating pressure ulcers and it's not working, that's what you're comparing your new intervention to. Sometimes there is a comparison because you may not be doing anything. But when you're trying to differentiate between what the I and the C is, the C is what you're doing now, and the I or the intervention is what you're wanting to do. You will notice down here at the end I also have the two T's. Uh, type of question and type of study. This can be useful to you when you go to do your searching because if you know what kind of question you're asking then you'll be well aware of what types of primary studies may be useful for you when you can't find a practice guideline, a meta-analysis, or a systematic review. What I mean by type of question is displayed in this uh, diagram right here there usually tends to be about six types of questions, therapy, diagnosis, etiology, etc. What you'll notice over here on the right side is the best types of studies or research designs that will help you get the best answer to your particular uh, question to uh, push patient care forward. So keep in mind when you're going back and you're looking at your PICO question that if you know what kind of question you're asking, whether it be therapy or diagnosis, you'll be able to go into the databases using your filters and limits to um, get to the types of primary studies or systematic reviews that will best answer your question. Keep in mind when it comes to evidence-based practice, there are two types of, of clinical questions. In order to be effective as an evidence-based practice practitioner, you're going to have to be able to do each type of question well. First, you're going to have to make sure that you understand that the background or a background question is going to be needed because when you're trying to find an answer to a question, it's, you're going to have to ask very broad-based questions initially to get a general understanding of what the general concepts that may be involved when it comes to a problem or a condition, as well as uh, getting a great general understanding of what options are out there for interventions. Now, once you have that, you'll have the second type of clinical question, which is a foreground question. They're very focused. They tend to, to focus on a particular type of problem, and they usually will uh, look at a particular intervention in comparison to another one. Remember, it's only with a foreground question where you can effectively use the PICO format.